For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world? To those who have given their, their time and their life over to him, I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Glory, glory to God. Let me greet you, one and all, wherever you are, <clears throat> in the wonderful, come on, the wonderful, awesome, exalted name of Jesus Christ. That name is a special name, you know. God told Mary, through the angel, call his name Jesus, hallelujah. It was not left to Mary and Joseph to name the baby, hallelujah, because that name has so much meaning, so much weight behind that name. And that's the name I greet everyone viewing the ministry, this ministry, the message of hope, uh, whatever time of day, evening or night. Let me take the opportunity also to welcome you. Hallelujah, welcome, welcome, welcome to the message of hope. I count it a privilege, hallelujah, to stand, to share the word of God. The word of God is precious, hallelujah. Don't debunk it, it's precious, it's alive. Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is relevant, it's good for today, hallelujah. It works if we put it to work in our lives, amen. Hallelujah. I want to read a scripture this morning from the Old Testament, you know, as I was thinking, I say, look, let me tell, let everybody know, I don't have, I don't have any fancy message to bring. I have the gospel, the gospel that brings salvation. That's what I am, I'm compelled to do, to share the good news of salvation because God saved me. Hallelujah and others need to be saved. It's the same good news, the gospel. I heard, hallelujah, in a small chapel, in a small church, a crusade, I heard it was a time that I needed God, but I didn't know it's God I needed. I thought I, I just I needed satisfaction, so I was going to look for the satisfaction in the world, hallelujah, but it's not there. It's not the kind of satisfaction you get when you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. So I want you out there who have not as yet known the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not yet been born again. You have not ac accepted the salvation that Jesus, that God provided in his son. It's time for you to do that. That's what we preach. That's what we say. No fancy anything. Simple. Jesus was so very simple when he was on earth in sharing the, the message of his king, the kingdom of his father. Hallelujah. You know, we have so much complications with the word of God and so much highfalutin language that the simple man, the ordinary man, don't understand some of the things. Sometimes you think you have to walk with a dictionary, a thesaurus, uh, to sit down in the, in the assembly to find the meanings of some of the terms. We, the Greek and Latin and all kinds of things. Give this, instead of saying the Greek word, the simple, simple word, the straightforward word. As it is, nothing wrong with learning the Greek, nothing wrong with all of that. Come on. But we need the word of God. Paul says, I don't need to hear anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. That's it. Preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the crooks, that whole thing uh, 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 that we celebrated Easter. Hallelujah. That is what people need to hear. Hallelujah, in the power of the Holy Spirit, the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to look into this chapter, this book 
in 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 second kings hallelujah 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 second kings chapter 20 about a king who got sick sick unto death kings get sick princes get sick queens they get sick and they die presidents and prime ministers get sick and they die because the sentence of death has passed on all men because of sin hallelujah hallelujah the sentence of death has passed on all people for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and the wages of sin is dead but life is guaranteed hallelujah through jesus christ our lord and savior amen 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 second kings chapter 20. <laughs> Let me say what the topic is. I didn't come here to tell anybody that God tell me to tell you you're sick and you will die. No, that's not it. Because <laughs> the sentence of death is already on us. Whether we like it or not, one day we will die. Except Jesus Christ put in his appearance right now. Yes. Then all who are alive on earth right now, right now, will not face that, that, that. Yes, but until such time, from time to time, because of, 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 of the controversy in, in the Garden of Eden, yes, death has passed on all of us. So I'm not here to tell you in the hospital or in your home, in a special nursing home, wherever. I'm not here to say, God said to tell you you're sick unto death and you're going to die and not live. No. Hallelujah. What I am here about is to let you know to set your house in order because Jesus Christ is coming again. You need to be ready for that. We need to be prepared for that because it's going to happen. Just as Jesus said, it is going to happen. And we got to be ready for that. We got to be prepared for that because he's coming again. Hallelujah. John 14, 3 says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. A place prepared for a prepared people. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. You demonstrated your love for us through your son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he did not refuse to lay his life down at the cross of Calvary for us. I give you praise and I give you thanks for that. Hallelujah. Chapter 20, reading from verse 1, 2 Kings. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Hallelujah. There are people right now are at death's door because of certain kinds of sickness. Yeah. Sickness. Kinds of sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But right where you are, hallelujah, right where you are, you can ask, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, Lord. Ask him, if you die in Christ, is no problem. But if you die without Christ, it's the biggest problem in the world to die without Christ. That's hell for all eternity. So in those days, the scripture says, was Hezekiah, Hezekiah was the king of Judah. And those days refer to a period when um, he just was got into his reigning situation. I did started getting in, circling in, and doing the things that are right and good and pleasing in God's sight. That the, the kingdom was threatened. Hallelujah. The kingdom was threatened. Hallelujah. And we in, in our world are threatened by all kinds of things. Threatened by war, diseases, crime, violence, hatred, malice, unforgiveness, bitterness, revenge. All kinds of things threatening 
our world and threatening our surroundings and threatening our cities and threatening uh, our, com uh, our villages and towns. All kinds of evil being propagated by the enemy. Hallelujah. So the king was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, he has a word from God. <laughs> he had a word from God. Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you will die and not live. Set your house in order, for you will die and not live. What Hezekiah did when he heard that? Do you think it's easy to get a message, get this kind of message? Yes, you know you're sick, but you don't want to die. Who wants to die? Nobody. All the people who are sick in the hospital and all of us who are living, nobody wants to taste that thing called death. So it wasn't easy. Hallelujah. It was not easy. I don't think it was easy to hear those words, not just Isaiah saying them, you know, they came from God himself to the prophet to take it to King Hezekiah. Hallelujah. Don't think you're too good to get sick. You know, I, we were at a funeral some time ago and this pretty young lady, eh, eh, <laughs> seeing what they were doing, how they cover the box and throwing dirt and um, all the kinds of things that go on at a cemetery, yes? And her remark was, oh, yeah, so nice, nice me. Is that what they'll do me? Yes. <laughs> I can't never forget. So nice, nice. She's real good looking and shapely. And I'm not telling any lie. She remarked that when she looked at what the procedures, she said, nice, nice me. Is that what happened to me? That what they're going to do to me? Listen. <laughs> yes. This body is subject to decay, to degeneration. It's subject to sickness. None of us is exempted. No, 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 none of us is exempted. I remember I was done flat at one time in my life because I overworked my body. I overworked my body. And one of the mornings when I got up to go to the, the workplace or go to a training, I couldn't get off my bed. I couldn't. 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 My body was down the one of the days I felt so out of it. I felt like I wasn't here anymore. I said, Lord, and I had no fear. I said, Lord, if, if, just so quietly, I said, Lord, if you're taking me, take me. If take me, take me home. Yeah, it's so was so, was so out of it. I had no fear because I have Jesus Christ in my life. But still, nobody wants to die. And this message to the king, it hit him like a blow. I know doctors, hallelujah, after they examine people, cancer for, for stage and whatever stages, and would tell the people, well, they don't have long to live. Tell him you don't know, within a month's time, um, within two months' time. But in spite of that, in spite of the what they say, sometimes people outlive the, the time they give. You see, doctors don't have the last say. God has the last say, people. Doctors don't have the last say. I remember also my mom. She was so very sick. Hallelujah, she had leukemia. Hallelujah, I'm not sure they had treatment for those kinds of things. And when the doctor came and looked at, she was in the hospital and they sent her home for the holidays and she was to go back January 6th of whatever year. And we thought it's not best to let her go back, but she was so determined. She sent her transport and all to come to take her to the hospital. But we didn't let them take her. And we sent for the doctor, and the doctor looked at her. He knew, he had an idea, doctors will know. And he, he said, if you all need any certificate, anything you all need, 
let me know. It wasn't two days good after that that she passed. That she passed on. Hallelujah. We're not exempted. Only God. Only God. Hallelujah. Only God that's keeping us. It doesn't matter how we pride ourselves and how we behave haughty and prideful and, and showing off and all kinds of things. It's only God that's keeping us, you know. It's only God that's keeping us alive. Because the scripture says it is in him. God we live and move and have our being. It is he who breathed the breath of life in us. And it is his breath that's keeping us alive. It is God that's keeping us alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This death message. Death is a monster. This death message came to the king. Hallelujah. And some people probably have that, that message uh, spoken to them. Hallelujah. It's not long. Hallelujah. It won't be long. But you can ask God where you are. Ask God to heal you. Come on. He's still the healer. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Rapha. He can heal. He still heals. If you ask him, if you believe, and if you ask him, he will. But the greatest healing is the healing from a sick, sin, sin, sick soul. The soul is sick with sin. And the greatest healing for any person on earth is the healing of the soul from sin. <laughs> the healing of the soul from sin. Hallelujah. The greatest healing. That's the healing of the soul from sin. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. So the prophet came and said, you're going to die. Thus said the Lord. <laughs> this is what the God of heaven has said. He sent me to tell you, King Hezekiah. And you could imagine, I could imagine uh, the, the prophet might have tightened his, his jaw, his cheeks, because it's not a good, it's not good news. <laughs> this is not good news. I remember way, way back, before we had radio, much radio and um, death announcements on the radio, guys used to go around from village to village. If somebody dies in, let's say, Plymouth, they will come up. Uh, probably they ride, I don't know if they use vehicles, and they would say, wake up people, wake up! Uh, John Thomas, dead! And that would be so loud, and that would scare us so much, that would wake you up and you just cannot sleep back, cannot go back to sleep. It was so terrible, it was so dreadful. When you hear that, and they used to say it so mournful, mournful, very mournful. And when, they, that, when you wake up and you hear that, it's difficult to, to go back to sleep. Yes? So, 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 so this message, this message to Hezekiah, the king, it, it, wasn't a, a good, it wasn't a good one. It was not good tidings. It was not good tidings of great joy. Hallelujah. Yes? We want to get good news, but there's also bad news. Amen? So, and let's remember the topic is uh, set your house in order. Set your house in order. So, so the king had to organize with his family. He had to organize with his family. And I know there are lots of people who have already organized. They have made out their will and all those things. And who will have the land and who will have the house and who will have the car and who will have the money in the bank and what they have to do. A lot of people would have done that. But that's not the house. <laughs> that's not the house we're talking about. That's not the house. Not the physical structure of concrete or wood. It's your life. Set your house in order. Set your life in order. Because Jesus Christ is coming again. For Hezekiah, he had to set his house in order because he would die. 
He had to make sure he deal with his family, set things straight, who will reign after him, whatever, what will, who will do what. He had to set that in order because he will die. And the thing is, if when Hezekiah, he, because he eventually died, there was no problem for him. He would have gone to Abraham's bosom. He would not have gone to hell. And you say, but he wasn't born again. No, they didn't have to be born again. The blood, the blood, the atonement, the priest, the high priest would make atonement for them once per year. That is what was done then. Jesus Christ was not born into the world as yet to have his blood shed. So they were under that covenant, hallelujah, where the blood of the animals, the, the priest, the high priest would go in once per year to make atonement for the sin of God's people back then. So if Hezekiah and eventually did that, he would not go, he would go to a place called paradise. Yes, he would not have. But for us today, the blood of animals will not work. New covenant. <laughs> New covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ is potent enough to cleanse us from the darkest, deepest sin, red like crimson, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus uh, will make us white as snow, hallelujah, it will make us white, and, and not physically white, not the color white, but cleansed, cleansed, become pure, hallelujah, we have the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ is still available. And in the light of the coming again, Jesus coming again, we need both, both the sinner and the saint, the believer, we have to be rapture ready. We gotta live the life that because the trumpet will sound any day, we don't have to wait for signs, that will happen any day, hallelujah. Any moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be ready. We cannot be living careless lives that they, that they will take us unawares. Hallelujah. We have to be working and watching and listening. <laughs> Work, do what we have to do. Keep watching and listen. Hallelujah. For this song. We got to be alert. We got to be alert, alert. Spiritually alert as we go from day to day. It could be today, every day in the night we have to say because the Bible tells us we don't know when it will happen. Morning, noon, or night. We just have to be ready. So, 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 dear Hezekiah, sick unto death. He had to set his house in order because he would die. He would die and not live. Hallelujah. And we today have to set our house in order, our life, our life, our lives, set our lives. Make it right with God because Jesus is coming again. He's coming for people prepared by him. Hallelujah. We can prepare ourselves. We have to know, we, we have to get in the word and take heed to the word. But the original preparation, we can change our lives. We can cleanse ourselves from sin. He did that initially. And now we have to continue in his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Set your house in order. Set your house in order. Get right with God. Get right with God. Get right with God. Before it's eternally too late. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. I'm not saying soon, you know, because he didn't say soon. And that people, them still talking about that. Them still saying, yes, we got to let you know. It's for your reason, for your purpose. You are the reason why he hasn't come as yet. You who are saying, the entire tell me that, look how this, long they're saying that. And Jesus said, come yet. Yeah, he ain't come. Yet is a good word. Yet it's a good word. The reason he hasn't done it as yet. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to set your house in order. He's waiting on you to get right with him. He's waiting on you to make the choice to serve God. He's waiting on you to turn from sin and turn to serve the true and the living God. He's waiting 
on you to receive his son whom he sent, hallelujah, to pay the price he didn't owe, hallelujah, with his life, with his blood, hallelujah, he paid the price he didn't owe, hallelujah, get right, get right, get right before you die in your sin, Jesus Christ is coming again, hallelujah, and people who are sick, and you know the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal savior. Listen, we shall be changed. Don't worry. We shall be changed. This mortal shall put on immortality. And this corruption, this body that, that, that is subject to all kinds of sickness and disease, will be changed in corruption. Shall put on corruption. In cor corruption. They shall put on incorruption. Yes? We shall be changed. We shall be changed and we, we, we shall have a, a glorious body like Jesus' body. Don't worry. Yes, you want to be healed. Yes, you want to get off your bed of sickness. Yes, you want to get back home from the hospital. Yes. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, just keep looking, looking for his return. Take, take heart. Take heart. He's coming again. Get your house in order. You are on your bed of affliction. Get your house in order. Ask for forgiveness. You know, sometimes people curse God <coughs> for their sickness because they're sick and are serving God and look now, are sick and blah, 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 and say those kinds. Don't. Don't. One of these days we will be taken out from here. <laughs> we'll be taken out from here, from this sin cursed earth. Hallelujah. Your body will be changed. You shall be changed. You shall be changed. We shall be changed. Set your house in order. Get right with God. Get right with your family. Get right with your husband. Get right with your wife. Get right with your neighbor. Before it is eternally too late and you die in your sins. Father God, we give you praise. And we give you thanks for your word. Thank you, oh God. Let today be a day that many, many, many souls... Come into your eternal kingdom. Touch lives across the nations of the earth and save to the honor and glory of your name and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Wherever you are, today is a day to, good day to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Continue to view the message of hope on TA and every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bless your home. Bless your family, bless your marriage, bless your business. And God continue to bless our nation. See you next time. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Join Reverend Cynthia Forbes for the message of hope. Jesus says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. The good news of salvation. Why would I choose to spend eternity in hell with the devil who is wreaking havoc in this world to those who have given their, their time and their life over to him? I don't want to spend my time, my eternity with him. No way. And you should not want to do the same because it is forever and ever unending. Tune in for words of encouragement and hope in a life of Christ. Message of hope right here on the Tobago Inspirational Network every Wednesday, 5.30 p.m.